What is up guys? It's your boy Ten back with another video. Today we're going to talk about how to study even when you don't want to. Let's get into it. So you hate studying, but that's okay. I do too. And this is coming from someone who has taken, you know, MCAT, uh, multiple exams, like countless exams during medical school. Uh, step one, finish my step two. Gonna have to take my step three soon when I start residency, but as of right now, I'm pretty much done with everything. But I am a currently a fourth year medical student applying for residency in the United States. And I have been studying for the past 24 years and I still hate it. So you watch all these inspiring videos and inspiring posts about students studying 8 to 10 hours a day, 12 hours study with me, and you wonder to yourself, why can't I be like that? So as an average student myself, I often wonder the same thing. I like, why can't I fall in love with learning? I still haven't fallen in love with learning, and I can tell you that it's actually absolutely okay to not fall in love with learning. You can be a lifetime learner and not fall up with learning. The problem is that not everything that you do in your life is going to be enjoyable for you, especially with not every subject that you learn is gonna be enjoyable for you. Not everything is gonna fit your interests. There are multitudes of subjects that one has to go through and some of you will like and some you will hate. And that's just life, you know, you just gotta take what life gives you. And same thing with studying. For instance, I find physiology fun and engaging while biostatistic and pharmacology, I find really dry and dull. So now that you know it's okay to hate studying, let's talk about how to study even when you don't want to. The first thing that you gotta have is a study routine. Your passion and dedication for learning for medicine will only carry you so far. Having a daily routine is what will help you get through the day and get, help you get the most done without feeling like poo. You think Soulja Boy may crank that overnight? Or just think of any of your favorite music artists right now and know that before their first hit got viral, they have made hundreds of earlier songs and mixes. At least a majority of them. I, don't, I can't recall off the top of my head like who's like a... Just make one song like that and go big. I don't think... Even Justin Bieber. Come on. He was making like music videos and stuff on YouTube before Usher discovered him, before he went big. Do you know how many scrapped and discarded novels and manuscripts that Stephen King, Stephen King wrote and drafted before The Shining? Ask any writers and they will tell you that the most important steps to getting started is just to sit down and write. Doesn't matter what you write, you just gotta sit down and start writing. And the step after that? to do it every day. Do you feel like brushing your teeth is a chore? Probably not. Do you feel like the rock feels like working out is a chore? Probably not. Maybe sometime he does, but I feel like it's been so ingrained in him that he probably doesn't really care anymore. He, it's just part of his life. The most important thing is for you to get started. So just sit down at your desk, open up Anki or a textbook or your iPad and get started. For instance, there are days when it's hard for me to get started and I would just tell myself, I know what, I'm just studying for 10 minutes. I'll literally just set my Pomodoro timer for 10 minutes instead of my usual 25 or 50 just to get the ball rolling because actually most of the time when I do that and then hit the 10 minute mark, I actually just keep going. I would just keep studying past the 10 minute mark until I hit my 25 minute or 50 minute mark. Have you heard of the dead snowball? If you like, if you guys are Dave Ramsey, uh, if you guys are Dave Ramsey's fans, there's something called a dead snowball. You start by paying out the little debts, and then you start getting the big debts. Once you get rolling, you start having these extra money that you can pay towards the big debts as your small debts get paid off. Same thing with the study snowball. Okay, just sit down, do mild little studying, and then you you just start doing like a bigger chunks of study time before you even know it. So once you incorporate your studying into a routine, it will make it much easier for you to push through those tough days where you just do not feel like studying. 
because now it would just feel like another day in the life. Another day in the life of a med student. Another thing that you gotta do is wake up the same time every single day. Early or late, it's up to you. You're an early person, wake up at 5 in the morning every day. If you're a late, late person, just wake up at 9 in the morning every day. Just make sure you set an alarm. Even if your day's off, don't just sleep in until like 12 or something. Set an alarm on those days off. Wake up at the same time that you usually wake up. Because, you know, you can sleep earlier or later, but the important thing is you gotta wake up at the same time every day because you you don't do that, it's gonna throw off your routine, it's gonna throw off your rhythm. So following that sense, you wanna make sure you find the time that's the most productive for you. I mentioned this in the videos in the past, but mine is usually in the early morning, I feel like I can get the most done. So when I was in school, I was waking up like five, six in the morning, so I can get like one or two hours studying in before class started. Um, try to study at the same spot or location or room each time so that your brain associates that location with studying. Another thing you should do is put on your favorite study playlist so that every time you play that song or that playlist, your brain knows it's time to get stuff done. There's a reason why athletes have their like the game song, you know, they come, they, they listen, you see athletes like NBA players, you know, they usually have headphones on when they go out to practice. That's probably their workout playlist. That's probably the game playlist. They usually they have the same song. There's a reason why bodybuilders and powerlifters have a go-to song when they like try for their personal record. Um, my, my current favorite song right now is uh, No Hands by Waka Flocka uh, when I hit my PRs. I think back in the day when I was studying, my go-to song was the Avengers theme song. Next tip would be to make sure you decrease your friction. In order to make this a routine, make it into a studying habit, you gotta decrease friction. So how do you do this? For instance, if you put a guitar right against the wall in your room, instead of putting it in this case and hidden in the closet, you will be more likely to play that guitar and practice with that guitar as you walk by it every single day. Because you will probably not, you know, you have to open, if you put it in the closet, you have to open the closet, you have to take it from its case, and then you play it. So just decreasing that friction is gonna make you more likely to practice that guitar. Um, so you decrease friction, it's gonna make it easier for you to study instead of harder. So how can you do this? Keep your textbook at your study desk instead of on a shelf, or instead of on a bookshelf, or in your book bag, or in another room. So just have it in your study desk. Don't try to keep your desk minimized and make it clean work. Just keep your, cause you're gonna be opening it every single day to study anyway, right? Keep your freaking textbook on your desk where you study. Um, keep your iPad and your laptop charger at your study station so you don't get up and move and find it and plug in that can disrupt your studying. Um, this thing can run out of battery midway through studying. Decrease that friction. Set your browser home, this is the key. Set your browser home page to UWorld or Boards and Beyond or Sketchy so that that is what you see every time you turn your laptop on instead of Facebook or Netflix or YouTube. Because you don't, even if you don't have a home page, when you click in the open tab, you probably just favorite site that you go to, is like, I don't know, like Instagram, Facebook, whatever, YouTube. So make that home page the person you see to study your world, Boards and Beyond. Mine was Boards and Beyond because that's why I watch. Also, I actually set up Anki as my uh, startup program. So every time I turn on my laptop, Anki will automatically open. So you don't have to you just be like, okay, time to get studying as soon as my laptop turns on. Another tip that you can do is to delete Netflix, YouTube, social media from the iPad that you're gonna be using to study. If you like me, I use my iPad to study. Delete those things, delete those distractions, delete Netflix. Um, you don't wanna have any app besides studying app on your laptop, delete those games so that you don't get sidetracked when you open up your laptop and when you open up Notability. So you keep your the, the, the study device you have minimal and free of any distractions. There's been countless times where I'd be tempted to check my Facebook or YouTube while studying. Another thing you can do is to use the Flora app to prevent distraction while you're studying. So this is not only, there's been countless times where this app will prevent me from, you know, being I'll be tempted to check my Facebook or 
like my messages or YouTube. But this app made me think twice before I wanted to kill my tree. You know, because you had to go to the site, you had to kill your tree. Otherwise, and then I'd be like, man, I put like 10 minutes in already, and I don't, don't want to do that. So, and then as you do this more, you'd be tempted to check your Facebook and YouTube less and less. So it's a positive feedback loop reinforcement for you. Also, use the self-control extension on your um, Google Chrome or internet browser to prevent yourself from surfing the web or browsing Facebook or YouTube during your study time. So this is an add-on you can just extension you can put on your browser, turn it on for 25 minutes as you do Pomodoro, can't access YouTube or Facebook or whatever pages distract you. Last tip for you guys to set a daily study limit. So in order to make studying a part of your routine, you need to set a time limit to your studying because you can't, your routine can't be eight hours a day of studying. That's not gonna be a routine anymore. You're gonna have no life, and there's no way you can keep that routine. So this is gonna be, this is gonna sound really counterintuitive. Like you're gonna say, "Ten, I need to study. You know, I have no time. I have three tests coming up next week." So this, you know, it's gonna be like a week before your test, or like days before your test. Like this is not necessarily you shouldn't. I'm not gonna apply here, but this is just for your long-term studying habit, right? So if you have been studying daily and you've been making a routine, you shouldn't need to cram before your exam. Like you shouldn't have to study eight hours a day for seven days a week to do well in your exam. People who tell you that they're studying for 10 hours a day, eight hours a day, every day, is one, lying to you, or two, not studying during those eight hours but spend time taking breaks, talking to the friends, browsing Instagram, or chatting with the friends. I guarantee you, one, either they're lying, or two, they're just not being very efficient with their studying time. So that's a method that another YouTuber, Frank Thomas, talked about. It's called time boxing. Um, so in this, I will, I'll link this video that you get to watch uh, on your own time, but essentially time boxing is what Elon Musk used was time management and he used this technique to work 80 to 90 hours a week while still have time to spend four days a week with his children at home so he talks about parkinson's law and in, in that work expands to fill the time allotted for it so remember in undergrad when you took like you put an all-nighter to finish that essay that was involuntary time bossing <laughs> you only give if you give yourself only 10 hours to finish a project, you finished it. I'll be, it might be not be like an A plus, it was like hell for you, but you still finished it, right? If you give yourself a week to do a project, it's gonna take you a week to do a project. If you give yourself a day to do that project, you finish it in a day. So that's Parkinson's law. So as a medical student, I can tell you that just doing four to six hour quality studying every single day is perfectly fine. And I did just fine in medical school. I never had fear of failures or anything. For now, if you're scared of you know, committing this much to studying, just start small. And for three to four hours of quality study time, that's probably like eight Pomodoro blocks for four hours, right? Easy. So this is when the Pomodoro method really comes in handy because you know for sure that you're absolutely focused during these three to four hours block, during the 25 and 50 minutes of studying that you're putting in. For sure, focus, because you're not distracted by anything. And if you're not in medical school right now and you just want to use for undergrad or high school studying, start with one or two hours and then bump it up slowly over time for next week or the day after. You know, you can start with two hours studying today and then, you know, maybe do an extra block uh, the next week, two and a half hours. And then the week after, you can bump it up to three hours, do an extra block after that. It's, just, it's like a marathon, right? You, you don't want to jump in and do 26 out, 26 mile outright. You know, Slowly build yourself up. Start with 20 miles a week. Start with about 30 miles a week, 40 miles a week. Same thing with studying. Another thing you can do is also make make sure you plan out when you be covering for the day, the night before, so then you can go into the day with a plan and not waste your time. You know, distracted. Oh, what do I need to study today? You need to start browsing through all the lectures notes. Like, oh, I gotta finish all these notes, uh, and then you start looking through the calendar. You're like, oh man, I gotta do all this for the calendar. So you don't want to do that. Um, so just make sure you plan this out beforehand 
So for me, I just try to finish my Anki reviews for the day. I keep it really simple. Anki reviews, watch relevant boards and beyonds from the lectures, and do new Anki cards for those videos. And then I look over to lecture slides if there's time. This is going to help you set up your routine. So giving yourself less time to study will actually help you motiv motivate you to study harder and faster during that short amount of time that you give you. And you will get things done for the day and don't have to feel bad about spending the rest of the day with your families or friends or working out time for yourself. So plus plus, positive for everybody. So let me, just to wrap everything up, not all of us are freaks of nature who love studying tens hours a day. Um, don't get you know misled by all the videos you see on YouTube and stuff and the Instagram posts and Facebook posts about all these med influencers saying they study for so long you feel bad about yourself. I used to feel that way. But this is why it's called the average students, which is what I am. I'm the average student. <laughs> and I'm sure most of you guys are the average students too. That's why it's called the average, right? The average makes up a majority of students. Not all of us are gonna feel like we love learning and studying 10 hours, eight, 10 hours a day. So this video is for you guys, the average students. And I hope that by incorporating these steps into your studying habits, you will have an easier time making it through those studying mental blocks, those hard days where it's just so hard to study. So just make it a routine, decrease the friction, and utilizing time boxing. That's going to help tremendously. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more, and just let me know any other tips that you guys have for studying in the comments below so you can help fellow students out. Make sure you subscribe, and it's your boy, Tenet.